Coming up on today's show, Porsche switches on its first 800 volt DC quick charging station for the upcoming Porsche Paycan, Tesla announces a new Gigafactory in China, and Nissan's 2019 Leaf is caught rapid charging at 102 kilowatts. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, everyone. I'm back after a week off for another episode of Cleaner, Greener, Safer and Smarter Transportation News. But before I get to the first story, I just want to express my gratitude to each and every one of you who reached out to express your condolences after the death of my big sister two weeks ago, as well as those of you who were at Anthrocon last week and came up to give me a hug in real life to say sorry. I was truly touched. Thank you. And if you want to see the video she asked me to make for her funeral, well, you'll find that in the link below. We're starting today's show with the news that Porsche has officially installed the first two 800 volt DC quick charging stations that will make it possible for its upcoming Taycan electric sports sedan to gain approximately 400 kilometers, 250 miles of range in just 20 minutes twice as fast as conventional CCS quick charging stations. Installed at the Berlin Alderhof Technology Park in Germany for use by the local dealership and its customers, the new 800 volt CCS charging stations will make charging the Taycan a super fast affair. But it's important to note that the luxury plug-in will also be backwards compatible with existing lower power CCS quick charging stations. With both its Reno Gigafactory and Fremont production lines working flat out to churn out battery packs and Tesla Model 3 electric cars, Tesla announced this week that it is in the process of obtaining final approval and permits to build its third Gigafactory in Shanghai, China. After that, Tesla expects construction to begin immediately, with the factory due to start producing vehicles in about two years' time. After five years, Tesla says it hopes to be producing half a million cars there every year. Given that Tesla is currently suffering greatly at the hand of the ongoing US-China trade war and has just put up its prices in China to compensate, this new Chinese factory could help dramatically increase Tesla's bottom line in the long term, although it's also going to require the company's already tight finances to stretch even further in the short term. This weekend, in fact right now, the annual Goodwood Festival of Speed is taking place in the UK, and sometime during that, Volkswagen's IDR Pikes Peak electric race car, fresh from its win in Pikes Peak, Colorado, will be attempting to set another record. This time though, it'll be super short, the 1.6 mile climb of the Goodwood Hill Climb course, which Volkswagen hopes it can manage in less than 41.6 seconds, the record that's currently in place. That record was set in 1999 by Nick Heidfield in a McLaren MP4-13. Of course, I'll keep my finger on the pulse and let you know how it did in next week's show. Also at Goodwood this weekend is the first appearance in the UK of the Tesla Model 3. While the car on show will be a US spec left-hand drive version, this will be the first time that Tesla Model 3 reservation holders in England have had a chance to get up and close and personal with Tesla's newest plug-in. Sadly, you won't just be able to walk up and take it for a test drive, but for those who haven't yet seen the Model 3, it'll be a great chance. So if you're watching this on Friday and you want to get to Goodwood, you've still got two days. Oh, and if you're wondering where my Model 3 review is, you'll be pleased to know it is on the way. Events of the past month or so have really cut into editing time, and I want to make sure that this video is the best it can possibly be before I hit publish. Over the past year or so, we've seen plenty of automakers strike up deals with suppliers in order to ensure that they've got a good, reliable source of both raw battery materials and vehicle-ready battery packs for electric cars. And this week, we learned that BMW is planning on spending four billion euro, that's about 4.7 billion US dollars, on buying battery cells from Chinese-based Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited. To date, BMW has relied on Samsung SDI for its battery packs, but this new deal will see it secure two independent sources for future production. Interestingly too, BMW is also working on sourcing the raw materials needed for its lithium-ion batteries, and for now will be passing those supplies onto its battery partners rather than making the cells itself. We've known it's coming for some time and now it's official. Tesla has sold its 200 
1,000th electric car in the US, the first automaker to hit that goal, and the first automaker to trigger the gradual ramp down in federal tax credits for electric car purchases. Now, this means that from the end of this year, Tesla customers will no longer be able to claim the full 7,500 US dollar tax credit for buying their car. Instead, the tax credit will fall to $3,750 for the first part of the year, falling to $1,875 in the second half of the year. So if you're banking on that tax credit to lower the price of your Model 3, S or X, I'm afraid you may have to recalculate things a bit. Earlier this year, a Chevrolet promised us that we'd see an increase in Bolt EV production. To date, however, we've seen no dramatic production increase with around 2,000 Bolt EVs rolling off the production line every month. Now, Chevy says it will ramp up Bolt EV production by more than 20% by the end of this year. While that is great news for Chevy Bolt EV fans, it's hardly a massive increase when you consider the increases that Tesla's been making in its Model 3 production over the past few months. And while I love my Bolt EV and think it's a great car, I'd love to see GM ramp up that production volume a lot more. As you may have learned a few weeks ago, there's an ongoing legal battle raging between Martin Tripp, a former Tesla process engineering technician, and Tesla's legal team. Tripp stands accused of industrial sabotage and hacking into Tesla's computer system, and Tripp accuses Tesla of installing unsafe batteries in vehicles and inflating weekly production figures by as much as 44%. Well, Tripp has now filed a whistleblower tip to the US Securities and Exchanges Commission, alleging Tesla hasn't been making truthful statements to investors, as well as admitting various key facts on its filings. He says he has the evidence, but it's not clear what will happen next. Of course, I'll keep you posted. While you may not see one at your local dealership yet, Jaguar has officially delivered its first iPace electric SUVs in North America. Rather than go to private owners, however, the first batch of cars has gone directly to Waymo, where they will enter Waymo's autonomous vehicle test fleet. Eventually, Waymo will install autonomous vehicle hardware in these vehicles, but for now, the three iPace SUVs will be driven manually so that Waymo can capture the design requirements and data needed to then build vehicle-specific autonomous hardware. So if you see one driving in California, let us know. With more and more automakers clamoring to get the edge in electric vehicle battery technology, investment in third-party battery firms is most certainly on the rise, especially those which focus on solid-state battery technologies. Longer-lasting, safer, and often with higher energy and power densities, solid-state batteries are considered the current holy grail of EVs, which is probably why Hyundai has announced an investment in Massachusetts-based Ionic Materials, a firm which has been developing a solid electrolyte polymer that could make solid-state batteries a commercial reality. It's not clear how much the investment is, but with literally billions of dollars being invested across the industry, it's likely that the investment is just as sizable as some of the others being made. When the 2018 Nissan Leaf launched late last year, there was significant disappointment in the EV world that it didn't come with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, more than 50 kilowatt DC quick charging, and active thermal management. Add in the rapid gate debacle, uh, Google it if you're not sure what it is, and Nissan's next gen electric car hasn't been all that well received by everyone. But this week, a Twitter post by a charging station manufacturing firm seems to confirm the rumors we've been hearing for the last few months, that Nissan is indeed working on a higher powered, faster, long range Leaf for 2019, complete with 100 plus kilowatt DC quick charging, a more powerful motor, and a 64 kilowatt hour liquid cooled battery pack. Obviously, this is still in the rumor stage, but I'll let you know when I have something more concrete to share. After promising us a few months ago it was on the way, Mercedes-Benz has unveiled its brand new Isotaro electric bus. Dual to go on sale around the world, the Isotaro, like its diesel-powered sibling, is designed as a city bus and, says Benz, is rated to carry a maximum of 88 people up to 150 kilometers fully laden, that's 93 miles, in ideal conditions. 
Powered by a modular battery pack, the current battery will be rated to 243 kilowatt hours of energy per charge, but Ben says it hopes to expand that to more than 370 kilowatt hours thanks to the battery pack's modular design. The eSitaro will also be offered with a choice of different charging technologies, including dynamic pantograph style refueling when driving or static charging rails that will engage with a stationary overhead charging unit at bus stops, as well as the standard rapid charge ports found on other electric buses. And given how popular the Sitaro is, expect to see the eSitaro in a city near you very soon. Tesla may have a massive market share in the electric car-friendly nation of Norway, but a lack of adequate Tesla service centers to service all of those customers' cars has meant that the Norwegian Consumer Council says that Tesla is fourth on the list of companies that Norwegians complain about the most, up from the position of 24th last year. In a Twitter post, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said the delay in expanding service facilities was down to a lack of approval from the Norwegian government to operate service fans. But the government says in return that it's yet to receive any application from Tesla to allow mobile service fans to operate on its roads. A victim of its own success or just poor planning? Let me know in the comments below. We're back to Goodwood with these two next stories, the first of which involves the world debut of an all-electric autonomous logging truck called the Einride T-Log. Unveiled at Goodwood this week, the electric truck could revolutionize the logging industry, especially since it could operate in off-road areas without too much supervision. Powered by NVIDIA's autonomous vehicle hardware, the 4G connected truck can also be remote controlled and can cover up to 125 miles, that's 200 kilometers fully laden with logs. I'm not sure how capable it'll be in the wilds of the Pacific Northwest. Some of our local roads are pretty extreme, but as this is so far a prototype, it's not clear even when or if it'll enter into production. While the Volkswagen ID.R Pikes Peak may be attempting a world record at Goodwood Festival of Speed this weekend, another vehicle has already taken to the short hill course, proving that it has what it takes to tackle the extremely tight course. I'm talking about the driverless Robo Race car, which completed a successful navigation of the course early on Thursday morning. It wasn't record breaking and the car broke far earlier than an experienced human driver would, but the video of it completing the course shows just how far autonomous vehicle technology has progressed in recent years. And finally, just like the British Land Rover Defender, the Toyota Land Cruiser has been synonymous with off-roading excellence for many, many years. And now there's an electric model to add to your list of dream cars. Enter Australian company Voltra, which has converted a two-door Land Cruiser 70 pickup to electric power for the purposes of driving it into the long, confined underground tunnels used by the mining industry. For now, the ute, nicknamed the e-cruiser, is being evaluated to see how it handles life underground, but I still want one. How about you? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and support us if you can using one of the three links below and give us some social media buzz if you're so inclined. There's also still just, literally just enough time to enter our 50,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you'd like to have a handmade, tailored Oscar and Hamish front set for a Tesla Model S or Model X, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, as well as Oscar Hamish on Instagram at Oscar Hamish, and tell us what adventures you'd get up to with your own set of custom handmade Model S or X luggage in your car using the hashtag Evolved Luggage. If you also want to buy a set for yourself, you can get a 10% discount by using the description in the link below. We're now super close to that 50,000 subscribers, so be quick about your entry. As always, thanks for joining me, and don't forget to keep pushing to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.